What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Today I'm going to show you a quick update on how the carnivorous plant bog is doing. So let's check it out. Alright, I'm a little sick here so I'm going to sound a little weird, but due to popular demand, people wanted to see an update on the carnivorous plants. As you can see, it's pretty much a mess. I've really not kept up with these very well over the past year. And, I mean, they're all alive and doing well, I guess, but they're just really messy, overgrown. There's some that have died off, and there's some that are new. So let's just get this cleaned up a little bit before we jump into checking out how each pot is and how each species is doing since we last looked. This first pot that we're looking at is pretty empty looking and actually pretty green. It's mostly just different species of moss and other little small plants, but this used to be Drosera nettolensis. There are a few in here, but a lot of them died off or like migrated to other pots by flowering and seeding. But either way, even though the pot's pretty empty, it still looks pretty. This next pot is pretty overgrown. I believe this is Drosera spatulata. If I mix any of these up, please let me know in the comments. It's been a while since I really looked at their name tags. And like I said, they migrate really fast due to flowering and reseeding. Sundews really honestly spread like weeds. If you look closely, you'll be able to see small sticks sticking up and out of the plant. And those were all old flower stalks. So these things have been flowering pretty much non-stop for actually almost about two years. I looked at when I first posted my carnivorous plant collection, and that was sometime in 2020. This next pot looks pretty sad too, but this is actually Drosera petiloris. petiloris. I'll try and put these on the screen. Um, I've definitely found that you really need to hand feed these ones. They don't seem to catch fungus gnats as well as the other ones. So these just don't look like they have a lot of energy and they're definitely not thriving. So I got to repot these up as well. Here's three pots of spatulata. Again, they've really overtaken the pots. Like I said earlier, sundews are a lot like weeds and they spread. If you see all those little sticks coming out, those aren't like random plants. Those are actually flower stalks. So you can see they've all flowered many, many times. And that's how these things spread because the seeds are honestly a lot like dust. So if they just get flicked once, the flower pods send seeds literally everywhere. These ones are actually directly under the lights and that's why they're so red. They can be pretty green too if you don't give them a ton of light. But again, I'm blasting them. And that's why they have tons of dew and they're just that deep, bright red. I really love these because they're super easy to care for and they look really beautiful. Here you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier, how the dead leaves are curling underneath and it's slowly sort of pushing it up off the substrate and eventually it might unroot itself and start to dry out. So again, I kind of have to keep my eye on these things and keep them from getting to that phase. These really fuzzy weird looking ones are more of that Drosera petitolorus. Might be mispronouncing it, but again, I'll put it on the screen. But these have been flowering like crazy. And honestly, I think they're like stress flowering because they're not doing well. These definitely need to be hand fed because they're just burning all their energy on flowers and they're hardly eating anything. So these really need some TLC to get them back and up to health. But looking from the top, you can see there's still quite a bit of life left in a lot of them. And they've already divided a few times and they all look a little unique based on their divisions, but they're all the same exact plant that started from like a few divisions two years ago. You can even see a stray spatulata in this pot. Like I said, most of these sundews have cross potted or just traveled around in the mini bog. This next pot is actually underneath a huge mound of sphagnum moss. So I don't know what's in there, but let's rip it out and check. So after scraping away all this moss that's really grown on top of it, there's actually a Drosera petitolorus really trying to peek its way out. You can see it's super green, super thin, and the heads don't even have any dew, let alone like the little do hairs i don't even know what you would call them but it's still trying to live these things are really resilient all right the next pot is going to be the giant mound of sphagnum moss this is grown all by itself and this one on top is actually a king sundew although it doesn't really look king like right now because they are heavy feeders and i've really neglected it so it's just kind of in standby phase but once i start feeding it again it will really get big again the sphagnum moss is super dense though and I really love that it grew like this because I want to build an actual bog and let it the whole thing get like that with tons of sundews. I think it'd be really cool. You can see which side was up against the bin too because it's all flat. 
Here's some close shots of the King's Sun Dew. This one is really pretty because it has such large dew droplets. And when this thing gets full size, which is like darn near 12 inches, it's magnificent. I mean, that's why they call it the King's Sun Dew. But it's pretty small now since I've been underfeeding it. Even in the large sphagnum moss mound, there are a few other species. I think there's a capensis in there and even maybe like a baby spatulata. Hard to tell. But it's hilarious how they can spread. Next up is the two for one special, and that is only because the Gromagolensis have actually rooted into the smaller pot, so I had to take them out together. It's actually pretty crazy. I've never seen roots come out of the side like that, but I guess they can. Here's another example of just a dead sundew and what they look like over time. Just really thick with old leaves that have compressed together and create some sort of like rosette. But again, as it dries out and gets crispy, it really pushes itself up off the surface. I kind of skipped over that first pot of Gromagolensis, which was like three or four of them, even though that was the very first one I started with. But here's all the other ones. They're insane. I mean, they really took over their area. This is my personal favorite sundew just because it's so big and they just get such beautiful red leaves with tons of dew. I found once they flower, they also divide. So each one of these pots was only a single one that I had propagated from the original mother plant, which you saw earlier, but they started flowering like crazy and kept dividing. So there are so many in here, which excites me because I really want to propagate the heck out of this one and get it going where I have just a ton. I love these things and they're so pretty and I would like to share it with everybody else. So I'm going to try and get some more um, propagations going and really take the whole like carnivorous plant thing to the next level but just look how big these are aren't they absolutely beautiful just huge and sparkly they're just like jewels all right unfortunately i cannot get the remainder of the pots out of this little mini bog bin that i have because they've created one large mat of sphagnum moss it has really spread and actually looks really awesome it looks pretty natural to me at this point and it really excites me and makes me want to build a much larger bog and really like scape it nicely instead of this boring bin because just look how awesome everything looks these venus fly traps are actually a recent addition i thought i totally killed these things by well i had them in their own pot and i let it dry out completely but when i dug into the pot there was still like a white not rhizome but like how it hibernates i guess sitting in the middle i plucked it out divided it stuck it in two different spots in this bog and they took off and these are fantastic and so beautiful look at the red edges along the main leaf part and then the heads with their color are just fantastic this is an absolutely beautiful venus fly trap this last sundew is probably the easiest one to care for and the one that spreads the fastest and this is drosera capensis these are all just seed grown by themselves i didn't plant these these just started by themselves and they were successful and they look fantastic i do have a red variety as well that has been spreading like i said all sundews spread but these probably spread the best and honestly they're pretty awesome i know it's a pretty like basic and normal um drosera but of all of them, it's pretty beautiful. It has long petals and lots of dew. There's actually a lot of other cultivars of Drosera capensis, but right now I only have the red and the regular, but I still really like these. All right, this next one is gonna be a similar bog to the previous one, but this is one of the first ones I made and I made it with a big humidity dome. And there were a lot of haters at first telling me how you don't need humidity for Drosera and sundews, which is true. However, they're the ones spending money every week trying to refill their bins with water, while this one can hold a gallon and never lose it for like six months. The humidity dome is really awesome for keeping in just the water, honestly. It doesn't evaporate nearly as fast, and the sundews do just fine. So if you really can't keep yours watered, I would slap a humidity dome on that thing, and it will work perfect. This one just has a mix of really everything at this point. I do have some uh, perpia pitcher plants in here. I've got some Drosera rotundifolia. I think there's even some Gromagolensis in here. Um, I can't think of the real spindly thin ones name, but there's a little bit of that in here. And for the most part, this one has just been kind of sitting idle. This one hasn't been completely under the light, so you can really see the difference of what light does. This next one is the same species all throughout. And this like first green looking one looks totally different, but this is just Gromagolensis without a lot of light. You can see it's very pale and there's not a lot of dew. The next one is the same plant with just medium light and you can see it's 
quite green and red. It's kind of in between where the previous ones I showed you earlier were under highlight and they're extremely red with very little green. So sundews really do react to light and you can really bring out colors with strong light. All right, this last one, I don't think I've ever really shown it just because it's just a regular one from almost a grocery store or something, but this is Nepenthes, and this is a really cool tropical pitcher plant, and it's just a really fun one to have. It's very easy to care for. I just dump some water in the pot every once in a while, and as it dries out, I add more. But it makes these really awesome pitchers that catch bugs and all kinds of creepy crawlies. Here's what they look like when they're first forming. They're actually sealed shut and not open, but then as they mature, the lid opens up and then it creates the pitcher plant like trap. And that's what bugs fall into and then they can't get back out. I do have a few tips for those of you who are growing these and how not to give up. I've dried this thing out a few times where the growth tip has completely died off, but have no fear. Just go back to watering it normally and a new growth tip will form. This one just formed a whole new branch further like back on the base and it also sprouted a second plant at the well at the very base at one point too so these are super resilient and if you let yours dry out never give up in fact same with sundews and a lot of other carnivorous plants don't give up on them they usually can bounce back to life i really like nepenthes and i would love to collect some of the more rare ones because there's some fantastic beautiful ones out there but they're like hundreds of dollars so that's that's way off in the future well guys that pretty much sums up this video i hope you enjoyed it it was a little chaotic a little messy but it's literally been almost two years with very little upkeep it's been a very chaotic past two years but anyways i think it will take me a few hours to really go through and repot that stuff so i think it'd be a perfect topic for a live stream I've kind of mentioned that in the past, but I'm slowly getting ready and more set up for that thing. And I think it'd be a perfect, it, just for that format. You guys could ask questions while I take care of the potting. And I think it'd just be a lot of fun to hang out with you guys for a while. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. And as always, may your plants grow strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.